Today's video, we're going to my favorite advanced exercises for patients with knee pain. My name is Dan Pope from fitnesspainfree.com. I'm a physical therapist and a coach. We help to make incredible clinicians who love their work via our online courses, mentorship, and online communities. My goal for you today is to make you 1% better. Okay, so we know the exercise obviously can be very beneficial for folks who have knee pain. However, it's really important that we learn how to dose these exercises appropriately. If you have someone at the very beginning stages of rehab, maybe the post-op, maybe have a super aggravated knee, they're gonna need a certain exercise. And once folks get to the very end stages of rehab, probably gonna have to give them something that's harder, especially given they're going back to a sport that requires a high level of demand on the structures in the knee. So in today's video, we're going over my favorite, more advanced exercises that folks have knee pain. In the last video, we went over intermediate exercises for patients who have knee pain. If you haven't checked that out yet, I recommend checking it out before we continue with this video. I'll leave a link in the show notes in the description below. The most important principle to keep in mind when we're going from intermediate to advanced exercises, and we're really ramping up the loads. One easy way to do this is to progress from, we use partial body weight to body weight, then to loading with dumbbells and kettlebells. Now we're moving on to barbell loaded exercises, like a barbell, regular barbell, as well as things like safety squat bars. Why is that, do you ask, Steve? <laughs> well, generally speaking, our grip is going to be a limiting factor with holding weights either at our sides or right here. If you take a weight, put it right back on the back rack position or front rack position here, generally we can use much heavier loads, right? When we're trying to unload the knee early on, these other um, ideas in terms of partial body weight kettlebells are really helpful. When we're trying to really ramp up a lot, using a barbell is a great way to do that. The next thing we do in the advanced phase is we start messing around more with ranges of motion. So this means we're using full range of motion, but we're also sometimes doing extended range of motion. From a squatting perspective, going full depth. The other thing we can do is we can add a heel lift or we can add a slant board, get even deeper than we could normally, right? Increasing some of the strain on the knee. We can also use a deficit when we're doing a reverse lunge. More on that later, but essentially we're going beyond the normal range that was required in a general split squat. And if we're doing something like a step up, obviously we can just take that box and bring it up nice and high. It's gonna be more and more challenging for the knee. The next thing we do to ramp up stress the knee is going to be increasing movement speed. So in the early stages, very slow movements, maybe that's two or three seconds on the way down, two or three seconds on the way back up again, maybe add some pauses here and there. As we start to improve tolerance, we start going maybe a little slower on the way down, one or two seconds, but a little faster on the way back up again. And then we get to the last phase of rehab, moving quickly. And this is usually going to be explosive on the way back up, but keep in mind, if energy storage is really the thing you're shooting for for your athlete, you probably have to go fast on the way down and back up again. Obviously, sometimes that's not safe with certain movements. So ideally we want to use it for some, but not all of their exercises. The next thing we'll mess around with is going to be anterior weight translation. So essentially beginner stages, we focus on sending the hips back when we squat, intermediate, you get a little bit more anterior weight translation. In the advanced phase, oftentimes we're trying to really push the knees forward. A very extreme example of this would be an assisty squat. So essentially, my toes are touching the ground, heels can pop up, I'm leaning back, I am actually not bending from my hips and I'm really sending my knees forward. So you can see in this case, a lot of stress on the knee. This is how we're dosing up over the course of time. You know, my patients keep telling me that they have pain right behind the kneecap. Hurts when they squat, hurts down the stairs. I think it's patellofemoral pain. What the hell does the research say about patellofemoral pain? PubMed.com, all right, there we go. Okay, excellent, there's 335,000 studies to read. Ah, guys, too much. I'm getting frustrated. Whoa, calm down, no need to be frustrated. This is Dan Pope, and I have fabricated what I believe is the perfect solution to your problem. It is the patellofemoral pain, evidence-based cheat sheet. And I'll catch you up to date on patellofemoral pain under 10 minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, that's actually pretty helpful because I'm kind of dumb and I don't like to read. Well, don't you worry, I'm dumb too. But when it comes to patellofemoral pain, I am not. We're gonna go over all the greatest hits. Definition, anatomy, what the heck is the pain generator? Are there any risk factors for this condition? What's the prevalence and clinical presentation? How about mechanisms of injury? Differential diagnosis? How you even go about diagnosing this? And then our favorite evidence-based treatment. So that's my promise. I'm gonna get you up to date on patellofemoral pain under 10 minutes. I'll leave a link below in the show notes in the description. Go ahead and click on that link and get to learning. And just like the other videos, we're gonna be focusing mainly on the quad and a little bit of the hip. Is the connect chain important? Of course it is. We're just not discussing it in this video. All right, so we're doing squats again. This time, we're using a barbell. So you can use whatever variation you'd like. So barbell back rack, you're gonna be using more loads. 
when you're doing a front rack, we're probably using a little less load, but it keeps you more upright, drives the knee forward, so it puts more strain on the knee. Both of those are going to be good exercises. So let's go ahead and grab this barbell. Yep, we're gonna do a back rack. Step forward a little bit, take your squat stance, and squat as deep as you feel comfortable, all the way down there. Very good, and right back up again. Let's get another one, see some deep, 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 deep. Yes, deep, good, let's take a breather. Uh, the next thing I like to do is make some more challenging is we do a one and a half rep. So essentially we're going all the way down, and we go halfway up, all the way back down again, then all the way back to the top. So go for it. All the way down, halfway up, all the way back down again, all the way back up again, and take a breather. So the reason why I like one and a half reps is because it helps you train the weakest portion of the lift, which is generally the very bottom position. They're also quite a bit harder than regular repetitions because we're spending more time in the most challenging part of the movement. Another way we can make squats a little more knee intensive is by adding either a slam board or a heel lift, right? So don't hurt yourself, Steve, walking up here. Very right, good. And then as you squat, try to get as deep as you possibly can. Yep, and basically, yep, and then right back up again. You can see adding the slant grants us more access to that deep range of motion. The other piece is that elevating the heels will pitch the knees forward some, and that's gonna increase the strain on the knees as well. So we're still training our favorite exercises like split squats and lunges, but now we have a weight on the back. So our grip is no longer a limiting factor. We can just really increase that load. So we're gonna have Steve go ahead and back rack here, take a step or two forward from here, long stride length. Let's go down for, let's say two or three repetitions in your split squat right here. Excellent, looking great, good. And then go ahead and take a breather here. The next thing we like to do, obviously you can do your reverse lunges, but when you step forward and do a forward lunge, you have to decelerate yourself a little bit more so, right, than doing a backwards lunge. So in my mind, the forward lunge is a little bit more stressful than a reverse lunge. So if we're trying to dose up stress to that knee and work on decelerating, if you're thinking about an athlete that needs to decelerate on the field, this is a really good variation. Let's take about a half a step backwards here, Steve, and do a few steps uh, forward with a forward lunge. Tap that knee and pressing back to the start position. Very good. The next thing we can do with our split squat variations is we can increase the range of motion via a deficit or adding backside leg elevation like a rear foot elevated split squat. So essentially, I'm not gonna be mean here to Steve. We're not gonna put a barbell on his back here. But you can see his front leg is elevated with a plate. And his backside leg is elevated as well. So we can do either or. You don't have to do two at the same time unless you wanna be particularly cruel to your patients. But go ahead and do a few repetitions. And the thing I want you to appreciate is just how deep he's getting. So he has to get into a lot of knee flexion, a lot of hip flexion. And the backside leg is getting into more knee flexion as well. And we're just stressing the structures more so, more time and retention, all the good stuff we like at the end stages of rehab. We can also do a lunge off of an elevation. So essentially when we do a regular forward lunge, we have to decelerate our bodies as the foot comes forward and we have to stop and push back to the starting position. We can increase the challenge of this just by starting on a higher surface and stepping down. You have to decelerate the body even more so, pushing back to the start. So you can see it's harder to decelerate your body, but you have to produce even more force to get back up on top of the box wherever you started standing on in the first place. All right, so Steve got taller and he's calling himself Christian now. We have a new model, sorry, a little bit confusing. But we can also increase the strain on someone's knee by changing the surface they do their exercises on. You can pause for now, Chris, you don't have to do a million of these. But essentially, we have a slant board here. What a slant board does, it grants you a little extra range of motion at the ankle, so we can go deeper like a squat that we just discussed, excuse me. But the other thing it does is it pitches the knee forward and causes more anterior knee translation. So Christian was just doing it, but let's have you pop back up here again. Yep, and then from here, just reaching forward and tapping your knee on the floor and right back up again. So challenging exercise. Obviously we know this is gonna be a good exercise for folks with patellar tendinopathy, but good exercise for folks with knee pain in general. If you wanna make this even more challenging, obviously we can just raise this up even higher, but do keep in mind when you raise this up, plus you have the slant board, that becomes quite a bit of stress on the knee. So you have to be careful with how much you do. We can also use the slant board for a variety of other exercises. So we can use it for a lunge. Keep in mind here that the slant board is creating elevation. So when Christian does his reverse lunge here and brings his knee all the way down to the floor, he has increased range of motion requirements, plus his knee is being forced forward even more so. So we're kind of doubling up on that strain on the knee, right? And the last thing we can do is a skater squat, which is very challenging, as we learned in the last video in the intermediate exercise phase. And you don't have to go all the way down. Christian's very strong, so he's able to go down quite a bit. The other thing I would recommend is putting some Airx pads behind your patient so they have something to hit every single repetition so you can be consistent. And over the course of time, as your patient gets better, you just go deeper and deeper down towards the floor. And the last thing, we wanna spice things up even more so, let's go ahead and stand on top of that slant board here. And let's go ahead and put this band under your foot. Yep, around the back side of the knee. And I'm given a terminal knee extension. So if Christian does, yep, his heel taps here, we can increase some of the strain on the quad by adding a TKE as well. So a lot of options to ramp up stress on the knee. 
So when Christian finishes up with his heel taps, go ahead and finish up for it and pop right off. Make sure you check underneath the slant board, which will be someone's phone most likely. Go to the Fitness Pain Free channel and make sure you hit the like button on this video. All right, thank you very much guys. Okay, now you're an expert with advanced exercises. Make sure you check out my video on intermediate exercises so you don't have to give every single patient with a lot of knee pain the hardest exercise in the book, right? So link in the corner, click on that video and I'll see you there.